I was having a conversation with one of the patrons the other day, and he was asking me if there was some way that like an astronaut could jump out of the space station and be able to re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and be safe. And I thought no, but uh, I was doing some research and there was some really interesting um, abort systems that NASA had proposed back in like the 1960s where an astronaut would jump out of a, a space station or a spacecraft and like wear a heat shield shaped capsule it would sort of expand around them and it would keep them alive, re-enter the Earth's atmosphere and land. It was called Moose System. And that got me thinking as well. We just saw the test of the SpaceX Crew Dragon, perfectly successful abort test. We're going to see astronauts fly to space in just a couple of months now on board Crew Dragon. And so it got me thinking about all the different kinds of abort systems on the pad, while you're flying, while you're in orbit, and maybe even trying to re-enter the atmosphere. Uh, and stick around, I link to a great video that was by Tim Dodd, Everyday Astronaut, about why the SpaceX Starship doesn't have an abort system and whether or not it should. All right, here's the episode. On Sunday, January 19th, 2020, SpaceX launched a Falcon 9 rocket carrying its newly designed Crew Dragon spacecraft. 84 seconds into flight, at the moment of maximum aerodynamic pressure, the capsule fired its eight Super Draco thrusters detaching from the top of the rocket and flying ahead. Moments after, the Falcon 9 rocket exploded in midair, destroying a completely good rocket, but the capsule was totally safe, jettisoning its trunk and landing gently in the ocean a few minutes later. Nobody was on board the spacecraft, just a couple of test dummies. But this test proved that in the case of an emergency during the ascent stage of the mission, Crew Dragon would be able to carry its astronaut crew to safety. Modern launches can make spaceflight look easy, routine, but it's still an incredibly dangerous affair. Every part of the mission to and from orbit can go wrong, and has, occasionally with tragic results. Assuming that problems can occur, spacecraft are designed with abort systems. Even if the mission can't be completed, the irreplaceable astronauts and their cargo can be kept safe. Let's talk about systems and designs built into spacecraft to help them abort at different stages of a mission, including some recent examples that show just how important they are. According to NASA, the definition of abort is the deliberate or unintentional termination of a crewed space mission followed by a safe and expedient return of the crew to Earth. Aerospace engineers consider each portion of the mission and ask themselves, how can we keep the astronauts safe if something goes wrong? The challenge of designing abort systems starts on the pad, where the astronauts are right next to an enormous amount of highly volatile rocket fuel. In 2014, a fully fueled Antares rocket detonated moments after liftoff, using up all of its fuel instantaneously in a massive fireball. Fortunately, this was a robotic cargo ship with no crew on board. But for rockets with crew on board, they need a way to escape the disaster as quickly as possible. And this calls for a pad abort system. On May 6, 2010, NASA carried out pad abort test one for the Orion capsule at White Sands Missile Range in New Mexico. A smaller rocket was attached to the top of the Orion capsule. With its rocket nozzles located near the top and in a diagonal configuration, the motor provided 50,000 pounds of thrust burning for six seconds, carrying the Orion capsule up and away from the launch pad to an altitude of almost two kilometers. This is a very similar system to what was used in the Mercury, Gemini, and Apollo missions decades ago. But with the Apollo system, for example, the rockets blasted right above the capsule, which was pretty unnerving. In the last few years, we saw pad abort tests for both SpaceX Crew Dragon and Boeing CST Starliner, which are designed to carry astronauts to and from the International Space Station. SpaceX tested their pad abort system in 2015, using those eight Super Draco thrusters to carry the capsule away from the launch pad. According to Elon Musk, the capsule reached about 160 kilometers per hour in 1.2 seconds, which would be fast enough to carry astronauts up and away in the case of a disaster. 
Boeing tested their system on November 4, 2019, using launch abort engines on the capsule as well as its orbital maneuvering thrusters to jump off the launch pad. It reached an altitude of 1.3 kilometers before deploying its parachutes and landing back on Earth, cushioned by a huge airbag. One of Starliner's parachutes failed to deploy, but this was still considered a successful test. In 1983, the lives of three cosmonauts were saved when their Soyuz rocket exploded on the launch pad. Their pad abort system carried them up and away from the disaster. Once the rocket has cleared the launch tower and is starting to accelerate towards orbital velocity, we enter the atmospheric abort domain. There have been many examples of rockets failing as they're at various stages of flight through the atmosphere, but the most tragic case is the Space Shuttle Challenger disaster in 1986. 73 seconds into its flight into space, Challenger broke apart, killing all seven astronauts on board. A detailed investigation found that a leak in the solid rocket booster joint allowed superheated gases to escape and burn through the side of the external fuel tank. The external fuel tank collapsed, releasing all the hydrogen and oxygen into a massive explosion, but the orbiter itself was still intact. The aerodynamic forces tore its tail, wings, and engines off, and the crew cabin and fuselage fell into the ocean. After the investigation, NASA developed a new strategy for space shuttle astronauts to escape during the flight stage. The astronauts started wearing the much heavier orange suits that we're familiar with, containing parachutes, lifeboats, and radios. A new escape hatch was added to the shuttle and a telescoping pole that would allow the astronauts to shimmy out away from the orbiter and then jump to safety. Needless to say, this is not the most reliable system for atmospheric abort, and this was one of the many reasons that the Space Shuttle program was cancelled in 2011, with a return to the previous capsule design with Orion. Crew Dragon, Orion, and Starliner all use the same system they tested on the launch pad for an atmospheric abort. The recent flight abort test by Crew Dragon in January 2020 demonstrates how even at mid-flight, the Super Draco engines can carry it away from a failing rocket. Orion carried out its flight abort test carrying a mock-up Orion capsule on top of a modified Peacekeeper missile. It reached an altitude of about 10 kilometers at the point where it was experiencing the maximum aerodynamic conditions. At that point, the abort motor fired and carried the capsule away from the top of the rocket we saw a dramatic example of an abort system saving lives on October 2018, when a Soyuz MS-10 rocket had a launch failure mid-flight. One of its strap-on boosters failed to separate properly, hitting its nose on the core stage in the fuel tank area. NASA astronaut Nick Haig and Russian cosmonaut Alexei Ovechkin were able to fire their rockets, separate from the booster. Then they followed a ballistic trajectory, eventually landing with parachutes about 30 minutes later. Once a rocket gets enough altitude, things shift to exoatmospheric abort strategies. At this point, the rocket has used up most of its fuel, so the risk of an explosion is decreased. It's above most of the atmosphere, so there aren't tremendous aerodynamic forces on the spacecraft. The spacecraft is on a ballistic trajectory, and abort comes down to detaching safely from the upper stage booster and following a safe trajectory back to Earth. Just after launch, the space shuttle could eject its solid rocket boosters and use the fuel in its main tank to fly back to the Kennedy Space Center. It would eject the tank and then make a landing on the runway. Once it was high enough, the shuttle had transoceanic abort landing sites in Africa, Europe, or in the Atlantic Ocean. If the shuttle had enough velocity to fly around the Earth, but not enough to remain in orbit, it could perform an orbit once around, returning to Cape Canaveral and landing on the runway. The most preferable version was called an abort to orbit, going into a different orbit than originally planned, but one that would still let it perform most of its mission. In 1985, Challenger had to perform an abort to orbit after its main engine failed almost six minutes into flight. They still had enough fuel and speed to remain in a lower orbit using maneuvering thrusters to get to 305 kilometers altitude. But if the orbit had happened 33 seconds earlier, Challenger would have needed to land in Spain. We've covered a lot of ways to escape a bad situation on the pad and getting up to space, but how can you get safely back to Earth if you're already in orbit or flying around the moon? I'll get to that in a second, but first I'd like to thank Tim Kofoid, Sandra Lindquist, Jesse Senoff, 
and the rest of our 860 patrons for their generous support. The topic for this episode was suggested by one of the patrons during one of our conversations. So this one's for you, Bill. Join our community at patreon.com slash universe today. Once you actually reach low Earth orbit, the risks change. Assuming you aren't off to the moon or Mars, you're no longer sitting on top of a huge amount of volatile propellant. You'll still have some on board for maneuvering though, and that stuff is nasty and usually poisonous to the human body. There are no aerodynamic forces acting on your spacecraft and nothing to run into unless you're incredibly unlucky and get hit by a meteor or a chunk of space debris. But you are a couple of centimeters away from the harsh vacuum of space and its total lack of atmosphere, huge temperature variations, and streaming radiation. You're also inside one of the most complicated machines ever built with numerous ways of breaking down. We've seen mechanical and equipment failures all the time in missions, from minor annoyances to near catastrophes that would end a mission and require an abort. For capsules in the space shuttle, orbital abort would mean returning to Earth earlier than planned, re-entering the atmosphere and landing at a regular landing site or an alternative location around the world. As we saw with the loss of the Space Shuttle Columbia in 2003, the re-entry period is incredibly dangerous, and there's no abort system that the crew can escape to if something goes wrong. The forces and heat involved are extreme. If Columbia had somehow survived the re-entry, but was too damaged to actually land, the astronauts could have bailed out using their parachutes to carry them to safety. But could there be a way to escape a spacecraft that's so damaged that it won't survive re-entry? NASA engineers proposed a system called the Man Out of Space Easiest, or MOOSE, to allow astronauts to eject from their spacecraft and survive re-entry. An astronaut's ejection seat would serve as a kind of space life raft. They would abandon their failing spacecraft, remaining in orbit wearing only their spacesuit. They would extract the life raft from the back of the seat, climb inside, and then trigger a foaming agent inside that would inflate it into the shape of a re-entry heat shield and help keep the astronaut cool. They would have maneuvering thrusters to keep the right orientation for re-entry and then pull a parachute once they got into the thick of the atmosphere. Spacecraft could also be equipped with satellite life rafts. These would be tiny, rigid, heat shield-shaped capsules which the astronauts would sit in during re-entry. If there was a problem during re-entry, these could be ejected from the spacecraft carrying the astronauts to safety. This is the equipment that might have been able to save the crew members of Columbia as it broke up during re-entry. But to give each astronaut their own escape pod adds a lot of weight to a spacecraft. Once astronauts get to the International Space Station, abort gets a lot more complicated, but they've got options. In 2017, NASA needed to scramble astronauts to make an emergency spacewalk to repair a failed computer on the International Space Station. This was a device that the station depended on to route instructions to its solar panels, radiators, and cooling system. The main system had gone down, and the station was operating on its backup. Everything went great. The system was replaced, and it was science as usual in space. But if the astronauts did need to abort from the station, say in the case of a dangerous fire, they could use one of the Soyuz modules attached to the station. There are always enough seats on board to carry all the astronauts back to Earth. Astronauts have a 65-page emergency operations document that they can follow, running through all the different procedures they have to follow to actually abandon the station. Once you leave the relative safety of low Earth orbit, things get even more dangerous and your abort options decrease. One trick is to follow an orbit, which allows you to return back to Earth without needing fuel. It's called a free return trajectory. During the famous Apollo 13 mission, an onboard explosion caused NASA to abort their mission to the surface of the moon. The spacecraft was able to fire its lunar module engine for 30 seconds to put it on a trajectory that would carry it around the moon and then back to Earth to make a safe re-entry and landing. There are similar trajectories for flying to Mars, although you're looking at a trip of more than 500 days to fly all the way to Mars and then back again. The way that Earth and Mars line up, there are ideal trajectories every 17 years or so. The most recent one was in 2018, and the next one will be in 2032. Spaceflight is still an incredibly dangerous affair, and it's going to be a long time before we see the levels of reliability and safety of commercial airlines. We might never get to that point. This is why so much effort is spent designing and developing spacecraft abort systems. You hope they aren't necessary, but they have been used to save lives in the past, 
and most likely, we hope they'll save even more lives in the future as more and more people fly to space. What do you think? Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Here are the names of the patrons who support us at the $10 level and more. Want to see your name here? Support the work we do? Go to patreon.com slash universe today. Once a week, I gather up all my space news into a single email newsletter and send it out. It's got pictures, brief highlights about the story, and links you can find out more. Go to universetoday.com slash newsletter to sign up. And did you know that all of my videos are also available in handy audio podcast format so that you can have the latest episodes as well as special bonus material like interviews with me show up right on your audio device. Go to universetoday.com slash audio or search for Universe Today on iTunes, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And I'll put a link in the show notes. One big spacecraft that won't have an in-flight abort system is the SpaceX Starship. Should it? Everyday astronaut Tim Dodd did a whole video about why it doesn't, and you can watch that now.